Mass Effect 5 has already shown us that there will be returning characters. But as of right now, we still don't know the timeline that the game will be taking place in, which means all timeline possibilities are still on the table. But I do think there are three specific timeline directions they may go in. So let's look at all the possibilities of returning companions within those three timelines. First, let's go through the life expectancy of each race and the age of our companions when Mass Effect 3 ended. I've put their ages next to their faces, and on the right-hand side is their life expectancy at the maximum number of years according to their race. First, we have Commander Shepard, who may or may not have survived the ending of Mass Effect 3. During this time, humans have extended their lifespans and can live roughly to 150 years old. Commander Shepard was born on April 11, 2154, and was 32 when Mass Effect 3 took place, if you count the two years during Lazarus. Caden Alenka was 35, Ashley Williams was 28, Kasumi was 26, Jacob was 29, Jack was 25, Joker was 31, and Admiral Hackett was 52. Vega is in his mid-20s with no specific age, and Zaid's age is unknown, but I'd put him somewhere around his 50s. And even though Miranda is a human, she was genetically altered and says in game that she will live about 1.5 of the baseline of a human life, which would put her life expectancy around 225. Krogans and Asari are known to live the longest of the current races that we know of, but there's no official lifespan for either races, and all the Krogan and Asari we know in game are spoken of in vague ages. Both Rex and Drax have histories that put them around 1,500, and they don't seem to be slowing down. Okir is also around 1,700. So even if they are rarer, longer living Krogan, they are still alive and well over 1,500 and can be expected to be around for a lot longer. I put their lifespans on here at another 500 years, but that's just a guess. There's also speculation that because of the way Krogan biology works and the way that their bodies have multiples of each organ, that they can simply live forever and that years of warring and the genophage have stunted their life expectancies so we don't actually know the true length of their lives. There are also no documented cases of Krogan dying of old age. Either way, they live a long life. And if the dev team said, oh, actually Rex lived for another thousand years, because he's simply too stubborn to die, I'd believe it. The Mass Effect Continue poster also looks like it could be Rex. So I'd say if Rex lived in any timeline, even until Andromeda, I wouldn't really be surprised, given what we know and don't know of Krogan lifespans. Grunt is a special case, both because there's conflicting information about him, and we don't know if him being tank bred can extend his life. But from marketing for Mass Effect 2, the elusive man had information saying that Grunt is around 300, but the wiki says Grunt is 22. So I don't know how long Grunt had been in the tank. 22 years seems more viable, but 300 to Krogan's is also a young age. So I don't know which is more accurate, but I did include both. Samara tells us she is almost 1000 years old, as does Arya. And Liara is 109 by the end of the trilogy, and obviously we know Liara is returning in the next game. Due to their life expectancies, Asari and Krogan are the only races that would be able to survive until Andromeda takes place. Salarian lifespans are only around 40 years, and any Salarian older than that are very rare. The chances of Morden returning are slim to none, but he can live in one ending, and he was in his 30s. I still put him in the deceased section though, because there's no way Bioware would bring him back, considering how coveted and beloved his sacrifice is. It's by far the more chosen choice. Thane was 40 when he died in Mass Effect 3, and Drell lived to an average lifespan of 85. Turians and Corians have a very similar lifespan to that of humans, living until roughly the age of 150. And Garrus is two to four years younger than Shepard, according to a dev on Twitter. So that makes him around 30 by the time Mass Effect 3 ends. Tally is 25 when the series ends, and she is one of the younger companions. I also added Edie and Legion's pictures in the Can Live Forever section because they are both of synthetic origin, 
and can presumably live until their bodies malfunction. Obviously, Legion is dead as far as we know, so think of his picture under Can Live Forever as just a stand-in for the Geth consensus. Javik was in his tank for over 50,000 years, and we don't know how old he was before he was put into cryo, and I couldn't find any information on Prothean lifespans, so it's hard to say how much longer he'll be around, depending on your ending choices, if he survived. And I added Conrad Werner in the honorable mention section because of two reasons. It's funny because he ages so much in the games. He goes from very little gray hair to straight old man, but also because I genuinely think his Dark Matter dissertation might come into play in the next game. I'll do a further video on this, but if he shows up in the next game, I wouldn't be surprised. And when it comes to the Andromeda crew, it isn't really important to calculate how much time they have left, considering any time jumps to this time frame would most likely be very near to where we left off after Andromeda. And the crew, aside from Drac, were all very young. As for their ages, Sarah Ryder is 22, Drac is roughly 1,500 according to his life stories, PB says she is 100 and some change, Vetra is confirmed to be in her late 20s according to a Bioware writer, and Jal tells Liam he is 27 Earth years. As for Cora and Liam, if you break down Cora's life and her career that started at 18, she is roughly around 30. And while there is nothing pointing to Liam's age, I would estimate he is in his early 20s because he is written very young like Sarah Ryder. So there is everyone's age and life expectancy. And when we talk about the next game's timeline and returning characters, I want to bring up this very important and overlooked paragraph from the N7 Day blog post. It says, We've asked ourselves many of the same questions you've asked us over the years. What happened to everyone you know and loved in the games? Who really died? Who had kids with whom? What does a baby Volus sound like? What about all the galaxies? The endings? What the heck is going on with our Asari scientist turned shadow broker? What about... Never mind, you get the idea. And of course, to those questions, there are answers, but you'll have to wait to hear them. And I think this is important because Gamble specifically says, those questions have answers and will eventually hear them. I genuinely think this bit of information was one of the most important tidbits in the N7 Day Info. It shows they're addressing these questions, finally. Questions that were not answered in Andromeda, nor can they be. So no, I don't think this game will take place in Andromeda simply because there's too much left to resolve in the Milky Way. There's also so much we haven't explored in the Milky Way galaxy, and they're very clearly using aesthetics and nostalgia from the original trilogy for us not to return there, at the very least. And yes, a lot of people want to go back to Andromeda, but as the franchise currently stands, I think a return to the Milky Way galaxy is a more reasonable way to win back the fan base. It's an easy financial move, especially to get fans who didn't enjoy Andromeda back into the series. So yes, I think this will be in the timeline of the original trilogy, and I think there will be many returning companions, even if only in name, but maybe setting up potential appearances in future games as well. We know Bioware has moved to only making Mass Effect and Dragon Age games moving forward, and they won't pack a bunch of cameos in the first game and I assume this next game will be a soft launch of a new story, a new setting, setting up for future games, which could mean future cameos as well. Some things I'd eventually like to see or even hear of is Garrus as Primarch on Palavin, Tally and her new life on Rannoch, and Rex rebuilding Tuchanka. I think Gamble and the team know that we all want to know these things. And that's why that blog post very obviously hinted at finding out those answers. But... The next game can't and shouldn't be a who's who of nostalgia. But again, if they go the route where there is a major time jump, they could have codexes, extranet videos, emails, and stories of what our past companions did in their lives, which might be an easier way to show this considering how many outcomes there were, even if some were rarely chosen. Either way, when we talk about the next game, we still have to look at all possibilities. If you've been following the N7 Day reveals and everything they've been showing and things that they've been hinting at, 
you'd know that Andromeda is absolutely being included, and we've seen some weird Andromeda dates connected to some of the teasers. So when we look at the possibilities of companions returning, I think we need to look at it in two different timelines with three possibilities. A timeline that's closer to the original trilogy, which majority of the companions would still live to at least 2,300. Yes, they'd be old as shit, but they'd still be around most likely. Though I doubt the game would do a time jump like that. It would have to be closer to the end of Mass Effect 3. I'd say anything within the next 2 to 20 years after the Reaper War would be an okay time jump, with enough room to still see what the companions were up to. Another timeline possibility is that we'll jump to the timeline of Andromeda and still be in the Milky Way. I don't think this is really a major option, but at this point we know nothing, so I'm leaving all possibilities open. If this happens, only Asari and Krogan that we knew from the original trilogy would still be around. And another possibility of a time jump is of course the Andromeda timeline. And realistically, I also don't see this being the main timeline either. I think this would upset a lot of fans when the Mass Effect franchise is still kind of in the process of winning back its fan base after Andromeda. And I say that as someone who really likes Andromeda. Making Andromeda take place in another galaxy far into the future left a lot of fans frustrated with the game because nothing from Mass Effect 3 was addressed. And Gamble's N7 Day blog post tells me that they know this. So if we are following close to the events of Mass Effect 3, obviously everyone can still return. And returning or at least mentioned companions would depend on your choices, hopefully, since almost every character listed here can die. If we go to Andromeda, only Liara and Grunt would be able to live until 2819 for sure, with any other Asari and Krogan being a maybe, since we don't really know the true extent of their lives. I did mark Arya, Samara, and Rex as probably living until 2600 at the most, which would add another 500 years, but we don't really see any of them slowing down, so honestly, who knows? There is still so much unanswered in the Mass Effect universe that anything is possible. But obviously by Andromeda, all the humans, Corians, Salarians, Drell, etc. that we knew in the original trilogy would be gone. And this is all without factoring in any type of cryosleep or wormholes or time travel. And while I don't necessarily think time travel or cryosleep will factor in, I think wormholes may be a real possibility. And that leaves us to our final timeline possibility, both. If they are opening up time dilation or wormholes or dark energy possibilities that mess with time and space, which seems like might be a true possibility, then we may be experiencing both timelines in some way. Depending on how this is done, all the companions might still be alive. I don't really think you can show Rex's armor, which is so iconic and unique, and then say it's not him, personally. Not that I want to solidify that that is indeed Rex. I just think that if that's the type of clues and hints they're going to include and make them essentially red herrings, that will definitely have backlash because people don't want to feel intentionally deceived. So personally, I think this is Rex. And I think we're going to be in the timeline of the original trilogy, probably a few years after the events of Mass Effect 3. And my current running theory is that wormholes will be involved or maybe the message dated in 2819 that we heard from Liara, who was already communicating with Alec Ryder, will be her sending messages to the future. Who knows? And yes, there is theories that this armor could actually be Grunt in Rex's armor. And yes, that's also a possibility as well. As for companions, I think right now that have been hinted at returning, obviously Rex, I think, is returning, but then Arya also may be returning with the Omega symbols, and then obviously we know Liara is returning for sure. But I did make a visual of the characters I see returning in Mass Effect 5. Top left is my most expected returning characters, and bottom right is my least expected. Not every companion can or should return, and I expect a lot of cameos to be in voice memos, vids of the past, or from emails. I bet maybe five or so companions will appear, with maybe future setups for other companion cameos in the future games. But this is just my opinion. I would really love to see Javik though, to see how he's doing after everything, and to see if maybe him and Liara kept in touch 
and maybe he's helping her or maybe he's with the Hanars if he survived. And I do think that Bioware can and should canonize certain companions living because I think their stories are far more interesting alive than dead. And realistically, if we want cameos, they're probably going to have to canonize things like that anyways. Which brings me to Shepard. And I included Shepard at the top of this list for two reasons. One, the post from N7 Day mentioned Shepard and is very much teasing information about Shepard. And two, Shepard doesn't have to return in physical form. Though I think that should be a possibility, I think Shepard will be immortalized somehow if their sacrifice is recognized. And I also think we could find Liara's time capsule and watch old footage of Shepard. Really twist that painful knife. Have your new protagonist and companions watch it with Liara. Okay, now I'm just sad. Anyways, Shepard is also, in a way, Mass Effect's bread and butter. Shepard brings in money and crowds, and I just can't see them not including something about Shepard. Even if it's a vid from the extranet of past Shepard. Even if it's footage of Shepard with their helmet on and Mark Muir and Jennifer Hale return to add new voice lines. I mean, they use Jennifer Hale as Shepard for Mass Effect Andromeda marketing. I expect new Shepard voice lines at the bare minimum. My list isn't just for characters we'll meet. It's more for relevancy to the game to find out what they've been up to. And it's just my opinion. Realistically though, I expect to physically see the first five on this list, with Shepard being a possibility, and then with Grunt, Arya, and Rex being other high possibilities based on things that we've seen. The concept art from 2022 has two Omega signs, and Arya is Omega. So fingers crossed her and Carrie Ann Moss return. I also didn't include Zaid because the voice actor did pass away and I don't see them recasting for such a small role, especially considering his voice actor died. As for Jacob, he isn't well liked in the fandom, partly from his poor writing making him cheat and forcefully flirt with Shepard. I don't hate Jacob, but I do think that the writing failed him. So no, I don't see him returning at all. And yes, I genuinely do think Conrad Werner will show up. I don't know why, but I feel it in my bones. If he doesn't, that's fine. I'm not a Conrad Werner groupie or anything. I just genuinely think his dissertation could become relevant. And it would be a funny running joke to just have him keep reappearing, to be honest. And I posted this image to Twitter and Gamble himself quote retweeted it with this hilarious image. I know he's joking, but I genuinely hope we see Conrad Werner again, just so we can look back at this image Gamble made and laugh. Also, like I keep saying, his dissertation on dark energy might become important. Alex Wilton Reagan also responded to this and I actually felt bad because realistically, I don't think we'll see Sam Trainer again. I mean, maybe, but I would expect them to focus on more well-known companion returns since they're building this game from the ground up. But that's also just my opinion. I could very well be wrong. And even if Alex doesn't return as Samantha, I hope she does return to Mass Effect to voice someone else. I mostly just wanted to include the main companions in this image and Hackett and Werner since I think they could return. And obviously almost everyone here can die. I have no idea how Gamble and the team are going to handle moving this franchise forward. Considering all the ending choices and possibilities of companion deaths, it's going to be interesting to see whatever they do. And I didn't include the Andromeda companions here simply because I think if we're going to the Andromeda galaxy and timeline, we'll see the entire old crew. But again, I don't know. Mass Effect 5 is being made in Unreal Engine, and Andromeda was made in Frostbite. So I don't know how well things translate between the two different engines. Yes, we did see an Angara in last year's N7 Day poster, but I don't think that's Jal. The clothing doesn't match to what we know of his iconic look. It's similar, but it doesn't actually match. It's very generic Angara clothing, so it could be any Angara. But even if it isn't Jal, Jal was still my favorite Andromeda character, so I wouldn't mind seeing him if he does return. I would like to see more Angara though. And if you're thinking that all my timeline possibilities are broken by there being an Angara in this artwork, I'd argue that if anything, this picture just breaks every timeline theory anyways, and doesn't prove anything at all. If there are Angara here, why is there also a Geth here? 
And why is there no Elcor or Vorcha or Batarians or Quarians? So yeah, the timeline possibilities are still very open-ended. And at this time, really anything is a possibility. But there are some additional NPCs I'd really like to see return as well. Shiala, the once purple Asari turned green after her encounter with the Thorian. She had quite the connection to the story in Mass Effect 1 and with Benezia and Saren. And when we meet her in Mass Effect 2, she's completely changed. Yes, she can die. But for interesting characters like this, I don't mind if the Mass Effect team determines her living is far more interesting than her dying. Her becoming an agent for Liara after serving Benezia would be fascinating. Or exploring the aftermath of her Reaper connection. And after the ending of Mass Effect 3, since she sends an email in Mass Effect 3 saying that she still feels indoctrinated. And yes, I want to romance her, especially after she flirts with Shepard in Mass Effect 2. Please, Bioware, bring her back. She's my favorite side character. And my next character is Shaira. Shaira was a fascinating character, especially when it came to the artifact she gives you that makes you relive the events of a caveman being abducted by Protheans. How did she even get that? How did she know to give it to Shepard? And what else does she know and what else is she in possession of? We see her for the last time in the Citadel DLC, and she's still as prominent as ever. We don't know how old she is or know much about her background, but I could see her having deeper connections to the galaxy at large. Maybe she could even be the benefactor, which is a popular theory. I don't buy it, but who knows? There is also unused audio files about Shaira. The Asari Shaira, more commonly known as the Consort, has declined to name the next race likely to gain council membership. However, she suggested an announcement could come soon. These may have been restored in the Legendary Edition, but I'm not sure. But the audio is a broadcast that says Shaira was supposed to predict which race is likely to join the council very soon. So she definitely has some access to some important information. Next up is Bray, Arya's Batarian sidekick. The Batarians have a bad rap in the Mass Effect universe, justifiably considering their history, but there is a lot of complications there. And we know that at the end of Mass Effect 3, the Batarians were fleeing their oppressive government. So I would love to see a Batarian revolution or something along those lines in a way to redeem the Batarians. And Bray was awesome. He was genuine and caring, and he sent Shepard this warm email after meeting them, and I would love to see him return, especially since I do believe Arya is returning. I'd also like to see Kelly Chambers mentioned. I don't think she needs a full return, but after her having to change her identity to hide from Cerberus if she survives, I think she could have an interesting future, unless she remains hidden for the rest of her life. But if we see any remnants of Cerberus returning, which I think they will, there is cut content about Kelly Chambers' backstory and that she owed the elusive man. She felt that she owed him her life and I would be interested to see how she feels after the events of Mass Effect 3 if she finds out the truth about Cerberus and the elusive man. Dusty Everman was also Kelly Chambers' writer and he's the narrative designer for Mass Effect 5. I'm sure he'd have fun bringing back old characters he's worked on. He also wrote for Dr. Chakwas, Ken, Gabby, and Cortez. Next up, the Council. Obviously, if you sacrifice the Council, they are replaced. But either way, there is a current Council at the end of Mass Effect 3. And not only were they intrinsic to Shepard's story, they were also heavily involved in ruining Shepard's efforts to stop the Reapers. I do wonder if the galaxy will find out just how unhelpful they were and will turn against them. Or if after Mass Effect 3, they are fighting to maintain power in the galaxy. Either way, we know we'll see some version of the Council again, as Liara mentions the Council will be furious in one of her new dialogues. Exactly. The Council will be furious. Although they should know by now not to underestimate the seems of different lanes. Another character I'd really like to see that we didn't see in Mass Effect 3 is Gianna Parasini. Like Emily Wong, Parasini was a fun reporter from Mass Effect 1 and 2, and someone we could build an alliance with. If she survives, then in Mass Effect 2, we meet her again on Nosastra. And what's interesting about Parasini is that her next mission was actually related to dark energy. She was looking into whether or not her superior should be concerned about it. And this was in Mass Effect 2. 
So this can be connected to Heishram star Dolan and that dark energy plot, which I do think will come into play in the next game. So Parasini already has dark energy connections. Maybe she helps us learn whatever she's already learned about it. I also hope to see Liara's dad, matriarch Athita. I wonder if Athita stayed in Liara's life, especially if time has passed and maybe Shepard isn't around anymore. Athita could become a shadow broker agent because she obviously had connections already, especially being a matriarch herself. Harriet, the cigar smoking Elcor from Mass Effect 2 is another character that I really liked and would like to see again. And Harriet can be found on Omega. If you find Arya's couch, Harriet rejoins Afterlife, after being found by Arya and liberated by Arya. He has a pretty interesting story and we need more Elcor friends. I'd also like to see Primarch Adrian Victus return. I think one of the planets we never got to explore and have very little information on is Palavin. And I would love to see the planet and see what remains of the military forces from the end of Mass Effect 3. I would also like to see how Garrus plays into this. I could see him with his military decorations after his involvement in the Reaper War and that that could make him become the next Primarch. Another character that sticks out to me is the Blue Rose of Ilium. If Char and the Blue Rose of Ilium got together, we find his last love letter on his body when he's found during Grunt's mission. I also wonder where she's at now. There's also this extremely beautiful and well done fan-made comic about Char's last few moments and Blue Rose's life afterwards. It breaks my heart and I'll link it below so you can read it and cry. Helena Blake, the once crime boss turned social worker or Arya's henchman could also be interesting to see again, especially if we are indeed seeing Omega again, which I think we are. Obviously we'll have to see Blasto again because not only is Blasto important to the Mass Effect universe, literally, but the Hannah are also voiced by Mark Mir. And I need Mark Mir to return. Another favorite is Admiral Ron, Tally's auntie Ron. Mostly because I'm obsessed with Shore Agadashlu and her hypnotic voice. But also at the end of Mass Effect 3, she is on Rannoch rebuilding their new home. She changes her name to Admiral Shala Ranves Rannoch. And it would be interesting to see how the Geth and Corians are living now that they are sharing Rannoch, if this choice is made canon. Another interesting character that doesn't get much screen time is Captain Lee Riley, one of eight N7 graduates that we know of in the series. Having a connection to Shepard and the N7 program, it would be interesting to see if Shepard's accomplishments and potential sacrifice have any effect on the N7 program and Systems Alliance as a whole. And Riley would be an interesting character to revisit and one of the few N7s that we even know of. And of course, there's other characters that I'd like to find out what happened to them, such as Eve, Dr. Chakwas, Cortez, Hackett, Major Kirihi, if he lives, Joker, of course, and Dr. Michelle, Thane's son, Kolia, and of course, Bailey. And honorable mention, Niftu Kal, the biotic god. But realistically, the next game cannot rely too much on nostalgia by bringing back the entire cast of Mass Effect. But as we know from Andromeda, with Zaid's son and Conrad Werner's sister, the dev team likes to do callbacks to things we know, and I expect the same in the next game. Maybe even more so, all things considered. But there are so many interesting NPCs I'd like to learn more of, and I wouldn't be opposed to some of these returning. If I had to choose a top five I'd want to see, it would be Shiala, Shaira, Parasini, Athita, and Admiral Ron to return. What side characters from the trilogy would you like to see return? And I do plan on making more of these visual guides for information when Mass Effect 5 comes out. I've made the complete timeline, the companion ages, the timeline of Jean Garson's death, and a visual guide of all the original trilogy and Andromeda clues and all the teasers. Let me know what other visual infographics you'd like to see. I know it's hard to answer right now with basically no information about the timeline of the next game but let me know which companions you'd like to see again. And if there's any side characters you remember from the trilogy or Andromeda you'd also like to see again. And a special thank you to my channel members. Thank you for all your support. I'm sorry I didn't include you in my last video, I just forgot. But thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.